All right, all you beautiful people. This is Every Man with Every Man's 40K channel, and I am your host. So we're going to have another episode here or another installment of our Chaos Knight Rampager. Um, this will be the last installment for probably a couple weeks. Um, as I discussed in our last episode uh, covering this model, I have to move. So um, it is time. I had to pack, and as you can tell, the table is now clean. No more mess. No more fuss. Cutting mat is gone. Everything. I'm, I'm ready to move. So the next stage is to film this video. I'm going to bang this one out, maybe only 10 minutes long. I'm going to fold up this table. I'm going to put some of these lights away, cameras away, and uh, get ready to move. Get ready to get in the U-Haul, and off we go. So you're here to discuss this, so let's get busy. The last time, again, the last episode, I told you that the next time you see this, we will have things built and the armor on, which is true. Okay, so the carapace is glued on 100% in position. Let's turn that around and show you. Okay, exhaust is in. Everything is on. This still moves. This is not solid. I want this to be able to be taken off still. Um, again, armor underneath. Let me go ahead and pop it off its base. As I said, we were going to also put the iconic uh, Chaos Knight, you know, leg armor on, which really kind of sets the model off. If you can tell from a distance there, check that out. I mean, just when we paint this, going to be beautiful. I mean, amazing. Okay, so one of the things that you're going to notice right out of the gate is that knee armor, right? Check out that knee pad or that knee armor. Um, that piece here, as, as well as the center piece, right, the, the greave or, is, or the tabard or something that this is called, right? And then you got the other knee armor over here, okay? These pieces came from another miniature line. So I kind of stole those off another miniature line, 3D print, printed those up. This is actually a shoulder pad, and this was quite a lot of work. I took this off another miniature line, okay, printed it. For, well, first I cut it because this was in the arm, right? The arm, you have to understand, just like a GW model, the arm and everything was in there. So what I did is I told the 3D printer to hollow this out, printed it, okay, went in with all my cutting tools and basically cut that arm right out of that shoulder, um, shoulder blade or shoulder pad. Okay, same process with this over here. As you can see that one, check that out. That is the other side of that person's armor. And again, I had to print it. Um, I cut it, sliced and diced it, made it hollow, so I made the uh, material thinner, so this is only a millimeter thick, okay? So then I started cutting out the arm using my Dremel, um, grinding the back plate back here, okay? Everything. This center piece, as you can see, check that out, okay? That center piece, that was from also an arm same miniature line, okay, same same company as the two knees, but this was um, from a uh, buckler, so the part that gets strapped to a person's forearm. So again, there was an arm in there, I had to cut that arm out, made it hollow, um, got into hot water, molded it with hot water to the body, then the material underneath that we're using kind of as the banner material or the the basically hanging cloth or kind of what we're going to put the symbols and stuff on with a little bit of fur up top make sure we can focus this the little bit of fur see how it looks like fur up top right there you can see better that is like t-shirt material but woven Okay, so it's like a woven cloth. Um, I don't know where I got the cloth. It's in my rag bag. Um, you know, when I do car work or auto work or whatever, you know how like you get old t-shirts or old rags. I have like a rag bag. So I just went in there, um, got basically an old rag out and I said, hey, this will work. And I made that centerpiece. 
So when we get that painted up, it's gonna look like an old ghostly kind of, you know, weird shape, weird color. And then we're gonna put some icon, you know, some uh, templates or we're gonna freehand some uh, pictures and stuff in here. Okay, uh, so next thing, where are we at? Oh, that's it. Okay, so on that body, that's it. That's as far as we've got. Okay, so now shoulders, okay, shoulder blades. Here's, let's, let's put this back on the base. Again, I want to get this done. I'm going to get uh, a post a video on the towel. Um, I got some towel stuff done as well. So let's go ahead, get this back on the base. That way we can work with the shoulder blades. Okay, check this out. As you guys can see, look at that. Okay, I purchased this one here. This is a guy on Colts who is doing um, mouths. So he's got, or, or jaws or something like that. If you go on Colts and I searched, he has 21 different uh, mouths or jaws like this, kind of monster teeth or monster jaws. So what I did is I took one that looks like this and look at that. I sculpted that bad boy. So I got a full on world eaters now. Full on sculpted that in, closed any of the gaps, any of the holes. The planet, okay, is made from a 32 millimeter uh, miniature uh, base. But what I did is I took the green stuff or the milliput, put that on a piece of wax paper and I basically pressed the sharp part, right, or the underneath of a 32 millimeter base, and it cut that out, almost like cutting a cookie, okay, out of a, like, cookie dough. So, basically, I pressed it, made it perfectly round, put that bad boy on there, and then started to just kind of work with it to make it look like a, a planet. So, now we got full-on world eater shoulder pad ready to go. Again, this is so cool. We got the chains underneath so again we're not done we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna line up a whole bunch of skulls under here right because with corn we got to bring in those skulls so we're gonna attach some skulls in there this one will go right here okay so that is that arm so bring that around check that out so good so sweet now other side here we go so we're in the process of this. Okay, same thing. We're gonna skull up the chains, throw some skulls in there, but we clean that up. Okay, and the reason why we clean that up is because I went in and I grabbed this. Okay, this is a 3D, obviously printed corn symbol. Super thin, check that out. So we printed that bad boy out. We got the flat side here a little bit of a curve or a little bit of a raised portion on this side well this this bad boy is going to go right here so once i start gluing this down and we form it little by little and glue in place okay we're going to have a corn or the corn symbol on one side of the shoulder pad and again it's going to be ready and it's going to go right here just like that. So there we go with the shoulder pads. So you can see it's coming along. Okay, last thing, and we're gonna close this out. So I had a choice and I thought about this driving home from work the other day. Oh, oh, not the last thing. Here's this chain, okay? This is so cool, look at that. It's like, um, uh, what do you call it? Dungeon chain, okay? This is like the old school, what we call dungeon chain, not the regular, just nice chain, but this is like, not nasty stuff that we used to, you know, you tie prisoners with. This is what's going to go right here. Okay. So we're going to wrap this bad boy. We're going to stick it through here. Give me one minute. I'll show you right there. Take this off. And then this, we're going to tie that in right here. So that's what's going to hold this all together. And we're going to glue all that in. And you're going to have that chain going around the back. Okay. So there. So let me take this off so we don't break it. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about is the decision with the top piece. Okay, here we go. Now, 
I had a choice and I thought about this on the way home from work. This would be really cool, okay, if I ground out that center section right there and if I was able to construct or 3D print a titanium spine. So, so, and leave, basically leave this hole or this hatch open, okay? That, I mean, it would have been so cool. I haven't decided if I'm gonna go that route yet by putting a titanium spine down the middle so you can actually see inside his body or see like his spine running down the middle, okay? Titanium with some wires kind of running to the left and to the right. Or this is my other idea, okay? Or I can do both, right? I still have the choice to do both. I got this, okay, from another artist online, which houses this, okay? And this piece is like the engine or the motor or whatever you wanna call it, the power cell. This particular piece we're gonna do in clear, um, resin and I'm going to reprint this because I can then put a battery and a switch inside here put use magnets to put the hatch on okay so now I have access to the switch and to be able to change the battery out and what we're going to do is we're going to turn this we're going to make a power cell okay let me show you here we're going to assemble that bad boy this is the bottom and look at this. So inside there, you got to imagine an LED and that's clear, okay? Or some type of uh, foggy, uh, clear white resin that, that the light will shine through uh, because that is hollow, right? So now you, you guys getting it. So then we're going to put that right there in the middle. We're going to stand it off about an eighth of an inch so it doesn't hit or crash this little piece right here okay i don't want to have to clearance this so we're going to go right in the middle and we're going to put a power cell right just like that okay and then from there we're going to put the battery and the switch in and we're going to be able to pull this off with magnets and turn the switch on and we're going to have an actual working power cell okay i mean this stuff is going to be crazy when, when it's all done. I mean, let me tell you, I mean, super crazy. So let me go ahead, put this here so you can get an idea of scale, right? Put this here. So roughly that's how that goes. We are going to put one more series right here. Okay. So we're going to go left and right. We're going to drop those right there. Okay, so we got one more set of spines that have to go in. Then behind that, a power cell that's actually gonna have an LED. It's gonna be working right behind, okay? Then uh, we may do um, a banner right behind the power cell or something big back here. I'm not sure. Uh, it's kind of getting busy, so to speak, right? Everything's busy. And by the time we put the spikes in and, and do a lot with this, I, I think it's busy enough. We are really close. Once we drop in the power cell and get the skulls all in place, we're almost ready for prime. I, I say I say we're two, maybe, maybe three weeks out max of getting this into prime. So what is it? The end of May, I'm doing this on May 30th. If I can get this in primer by June, let's say 15th to around June 20th, you know, that week, um, we're golden, we're good. So I should be able to get all this assembled. Um, oh, I, last part, and then we'll go ahead and run the, run the credits and we'll close this out. I printed this out, but I was not happy. This little doohickey here, corn symbol, it's meant to go right here. But as you guys can kind of see, it's just not the right scale. I need to enlarge it. I need to kind of make it a little bit tougher. Uh, these are way too thin and two of them broke off already. Anyway, uh, that is going to go right there. That's that um, armor plate that hangs down 
uh, left and right side. And then I do have the auto cannon or the gun that's gonna go in here, okay? We're also gonna throw in underneath, under here, okay, some um, wire. And the reason we're gonna have some wire is because we have these hoses or these pipes here. And I want these hoses and these pipes on the carapace to actually go go somewhere. You see how that one is going down into the armor, straight down? Well, right under here, I can take a piece of wire um, and recreate that and have it go down and then make a um, left and go up under the armor even more. So I can actually do some work under here to hide or at least enhance that area as well as over here, okay? And this is the actual bigger area that we have to work with. It's got the biggest gap in the most visible space. So if we can drop a couple wires, you know, like a 14 gauge, uh, maybe 12 gauge wire, do some bending, actually drill and have maybe some hoses going into the body, um, that would really do a lot to kind of finish that area off take your eye away from uh, the junk kind of sculpture I did there because there's no there's no texture, there's no skin, right? There's no uh, scales. So what we do is we're gonna cover that up with hosing. Okay, so we're gonna call this one a wrap. We're gonna roll the credits, sound the music, and we will be back once we have moved to our new location. Okay, everybody, I wanted to do this in one take. I wanted to get in and out make this around 10 minutes. I mean, we're already after 15 minutes. So we're going to close this one out. And like we say on every episode, may all your dice rolls come up sixes unless you're looking for that one. Peace out, fellas.